Today, the subcommittee will continue its bipartisan work to develop legislation to help accelerate the expansion of American nuclear technology. We want to make sure the relevant laws and policies are up to date and enable the full promise of nuclear energy for the nation and our commercial and strategic relationships around the globe. The importance of American nuclear leadership in building our commercial relationships was underscored during our recent CODEL to Japan and Korea with Ranking Member Deget and several subcommittee colleagues. What we do here can help these relationships in the years to come. But our goal is to advance durable and bipartisan policies that will expand nuclear energy and its many benefits for the nation. Policies that make sense for the regulation of nuclear power today and the new technologies expected to seek licensing and deployment in the coming years. This was the purpose of the bipartisan request for information to stakeholders that Chair Rogers, Ranking Member Pallone, DeGette, and I made back this past April. And the responses we received and the hearings we've had to date, it's become clear, more clear, that more can be done to update how both the Nuclear Regulatory Commission and the Department of Energy implement their respective missions. And there is growing recognition of the urgency to implement reforms. This discussion draft uh, today and the bills up for review today seek to make changes in law and regulation to align agency actions with the nation's broader goals for advancing nuclear energy. These also reflect several of the key recommendations from stakeholders. For example, in a draft I intend to introduce, we would align in statute the mission of the NRC and the, with the policy goals of the Atomic Energy Act to expand nuclear to maximum, maximize the general welfare. They should help foster nuclear and not be an impediment to nuclear development in this country. Several draft bills would improve the efficiency and predictability of NRC licensing by requiring more effective decision-making milestones, timeframes, and metrics to measure the performance and results. They should avoid dupl duplicative analysis and citing and environmental reviews and updating the reviews to reflect the realities of advanced technologies seeking new regulatory processes for advanced manufacturing and technologies for more efficient and timely licensing, cutting the hourly fees the NRC cha uh, charges in half for new advanced reactor applicants to reduce barriers and to participation, and reforming a key advisory committee to the NRC to focus on new and novel technologies and reduce unnecessary re reviews. Another bill following recommendations made by the NRC itself would eliminate a superfluous commission hearing at the end of the licensing process that no stakeholders have requested. An additional discussion draft aims to update the NRC practices to incorporate more efficient oversight to free up resources to focus on safety significant matters. These are good examples of reasonable, widely supported improvements that will make more effective, efficient, and predictable regulations. Other bills also involve the Department of Energy. For example, legislative provisions would update DOE's nuclear export reviews and its role to promote nuclear among our allies. Other provisions would remove barriers to foreign investment in American projects by our allies and will extend the critical liability protections necessary, necessary for nuclear and many DOE operations. I should note that not all the provisions today will make it forward in their current form in the process. That's why we have legislative process, hearings, information sharing. The goal today is to gather information and discussion, identify issues and find improvements so we can ensure more efficient, predictable regulation and oversight. Today, we'll hear from two witnesses. First, we'll take testimony from two top officials from the Department of Energy and the NRC. I'm looking forward to their testimony and perspectives and information on current and future activity and how reforms may assist the agencies. Our second panel will include four representative stakeholders, the Breakthrough Institute, the Nuclear in uh, Energy Institute, the Good Energy Collective, and a former NRC commissioner who is representing the U.S. Nuclear Industry Council. So welcome to you all. This is a solid lineup for what should be a very productive hearing. Finally, let me remind people that modernizing the NRC and DOE authorities does not mean moving away from principles of safety. It means ensuring regulations are updated to reflect the advances and capabilities of the nuclear industry today. The United States has the technological and engineering talent and capabilities to be the global leader in nuclear energy. Our regulatory system must operate in reflection of this fact if we are to succeed in our nuclear goals.